What's going on, Mr. Artist in Recovery? Mr. Daryl? Don't mind me, I'm just dealing with a dog from hell here. The older get, I swear she's getting more and more losing her mind. So I have a hard time keeping her reined in. I don't mind her running around in the damn house. I do mind her running around outside and getting lost and getting killed. Speaking of which... I did say part two on you, right? Alright. Near the beginning. We've got 4.38 West Coast time, Pacific Standard Time. It's Saturday the 23rd of December. The Weaver, John C. of Rosamund, California. <sighs> well, that was what I wanted. Okay. I told you that there was a backstory regarding the situation. And basically there was. When you are entrusted to do a particular task and you have public safety in mind, you are trained, you are educated, and you are code enforced. Which means whatever you do, you're going to be legally getting your ass creamed. There are places out there that I work people nearly to death and their bosses can be real shitheads. Let's put that out directly there, Daryl. My brother happened to work for one. There are certain companies out there that actually want more and more of the profit but push the people to get more of it. One particular general manager of a company my brother worked for has long been out of business. The guy who I'm speaking about is already dead. Died decades ago. Nature took care of that one. And also his own, his own lifestyle. But he was also forcing people to perform things that they shouldn't and they want to keep their job that badly. My brother was in a situation where he was endangering and he shouldn't have been. But because we needed the money at the time he was willing to kill himself over the damn thing or damn near kill him. And also people in, involved until he realized this was way too far dangerous. My brother didn't like things the way they were being running over there, and he had to take steps necessary to protect himself and others on the street. Some things I'd be ashamed about talking about. This one seems to be, I don't know, I don't want to put a bad light in my brother at this point. My brother wanted to be a truck driver all his life. He loved driving. He used to drive anywhere. Once he got his license, he felt driving and him were it. As a kid, the International Harvester, a company my, my brother's father had been driving with. Well, on a lap, my brother got to see what it was like to be a truck driver. Smelled the diesel fumes. He was hooked. He was hooked. He wanted to be a truck driver when he was a young kid. He'd tell his teacher one day in class when they're talking about their about their futures. And the kids started to laugh, and so did the teachers. And my brother made a point to him, say, hey, all this stuff you've got right now and the food that you get and everything else, where do you think it comes from? It comes from the trucker. It comes from the from the guys driving those trucks. And I want to be one of them. Driving gave my brother ext extreme pleasure. It was a way to get away from us sometimes, but also a way for him to explore and be free. Uh... He'd be a smart ass, he'd be an ass all times, but he'd be my big brother. 
there'd be times we actually harangued people over at driving courses, uh, driving ranges, and golf courses. When you have the uh, tee off areas close to a street. My brother and I couldn't resist. <laughs> Just about to raise the club and about to do their hit. Four! Both of us would be screaming out the damn windows. <laughs> and then we'd be merged in with the traffic and the guy didn't. Dang it! I got you, 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 you. And we already had, we we're already further away and we're laughing our asses off on that one. That was a hit and run scream. Yeah, we were bad during those days. And once I did, I had a recovery, too. But there are things that, in a company, that you don't do. Work your, t work your people off to death. And put them into a bind where they get in trouble with the state laws. My brother had that happen. He's working his ass off so damn much trying to keep the paycheck and trying to keep us going. That he was almost working himself to a heart attack on, this, on the freeway. Instead, he uh, he fell asleep at the wheel for about a couple of seconds, got himself, pulled himself over, and shook. Every time he made a driver, every time he made a log for the company, he made a log for himself. Back then, they had the papers, hard copy log books. He made a copy for himself. The company had to be doctored because of the hours that the drivers were working, more hours than legally allowed through the federal laws through DOT, Department of Transportation. My brother was pulled over by the highway patrol, and there becomes an investigation started, and my brother told him everything, including what the bosses wanted him to do and say. And my brother, in eventuality, had his license pulled for about a year, suspended where he couldn't drive. He couldn't legally get behind the wheel of a car if he wanted to. I said legally. But in the process of the uh, investigation, it shut down the bus company. It was supposed to, it just shut them down, and the owner had no choice but to have it merged with another larger bus company who did the same thing as this smaller company did. It was said... A little afterwards that the uh, general manager, the one who was giving my brother so much grief, had a heart attack and passed away. I guess it really ate at the guy. I don't know what happened to the owner, though. Everyone else got merged in with other companies. My brother paid the ultimate price because he got caught. But he was a snitch. Those records had long been confiscated, and I don't know where the hell they are anymore. And anything else that we actually had, long gone throughout the years. But during those days, there was one time I'm delivering with my brother in the car, the Cobra payment. It's the medical insurance company that you get when you leave a, um, a company either by force or by choice. Out here in the state of California, they call it the Cobra. I don't know if it was federal or not. But this was a way to keep up my, with my brother's medical and dental insurance. And he had to keep paying into his employer for about a year. And during that time, the general manager wanted to kill my... No, I'll, 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 let me take that back. Let's just say that would be the understated, politest word that he wanted for my brother. 
I brought in a check one time and he refused to take it. I said, you can't refuse to take it. I'm here doing the delivery. You can't get this damn thing out of me. He started barking at me and I just said, fuck you. Flipped him off. He comes up belly aching at me with a damn check in his hand. You do this. I said, fuck you, asshole. I'm only doing the damn delivery over here. You got a problem with it. This guy was larger and trying to be as mean and tough as he can. But he knew legally he had to accept the damn check. He goes storming off. I go in the car. My brother's in there. And I'm saying, no, don't say a word. Let me get myself collected on this shit. The guy comes out belly aching and being like a very tough asshole. Like, How dare you! It's like he's trying to build himself up to a big balloon or something like that. Give me a damn needle. I'll be popping this guy's skid right there and watch it go boom. <laughs> I didn't want to be put in that situation. My brother couldn't go to him for some reason or another. So I was the delivery guy. I mean, I delivered it over to him, and that's what I did. Guy didn't like it. Tough shit. He had to take the check. If he didn't take the check, we'd report his ass anyway. We had it registered. We had it recorded. We'd take it to the bank. And we'd tell the bank about the damn thing. We'd also tell the company about it, but we'd also tell law enforcement about it. We'd tell anybody about it. You had to take the check for the Cobra payment. That's how it was. Back then. Back in the 90s. But I was scared shitless during those days, dude. I was scared shitless. Because I'm driving in the car and a damn near got me killed. Hence, we got this situation coming up regarding over the hill. Well, getting back to the Google Maps on that one. I'll wait. Cold coffee, but it still works. Okay. Google Maps, San Fernando Valley. You're going back over to the 170 freeway in the Coanga Pass area. Right where Universal Studios is. Scroll down a little bit further. You'll see Barham area. Here comes the rest of the story on that one. Okay. As I said before, on that particular hill, it's inclined. It's inclined. It's also curvy. If you noticed the layout of it. If you notice the layout of the street. You have visual obstructions there. You have obstacles. The buildings themselves. They are a hazard for driving. Welcome to L.A. So, I'm making the southbound on this one. I'm going to be making a left-hand turn on Barham. I'm scared shitless. I'm taking stuff from the company uh, that, my, that our friend Steve was working over at Harris Space along going at Boulevard. He's moving over to Barham. So as I'm going down, or actually going up the hill, getting into the turn lane, and ready to make that turn, here comes a speeding son of a bitch. Yeah, I'm allowed to guess. One lane on the northbound. The far right, right next to the freeway. Only one lane. you notice, if you happen to scroll it a little closer, how this looks. Now, how are you supposed to know if the light's already turned or if there's anybody else ready to make a turn? And even if they are, are you ready to deal with this or not? But this guy was going to be making a turn. Now, scroll a little tighter, okay? Just at Barham and Coanga. See the intersection? There was no way during those days that they were actually able to make, you know, able to do that kind of thing. But on a red light, whizzed by, and I'm already in the turn lane. They have to yield. They have to yield in that particular area. There has to be a yielding somewhere. But they didn't. 
because they didn't do the turn in that lane. They did it in the lane that was supposed to be going straight, and then they made the damn turn. And that's what got me scared as hell. I hit the brake. I didn't spawn out, but I kept control over the damn thing. And he whizzed right along there to bar him. I think. It was a long time ago and scared the shit out of me. And by the time I got nearly to the middle of the road, the overpass, that's where I stopped, pulled over the car, handed the keys to my brother, who was told by the law for one year's suspension of his license, he could not drive again. He's going to drive us. He's going to drive us home. I'm not fucking driving that damn car ever again, I kept telling him. We're driving a van, by the way. No, 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 no. We weren't driving a van. What was Ma working during that time? She was doing her business. That was... Just got the license back in. Let's see, from 87 to 88. We're living on Woodley at the time. That was between 88 and 89. Ma was working for World Supply. An art dealing company that dealt with Hollywood and their and their needs regarding art supplies and stuff. She was accountant controller in there, but she was also doing bookkeeping at the at the time. So she had her own business at her own office, but she still needed money. Dave took control of the car, and we went over to Hairspace. And after that, we went home. Dave kept trying to tell me that, you know, why don't you get back in the car, John? Why don't you get back in the car and drive? I'm not driving, Dave. He gave up on it. I was that screwed up, that scared, that terrified, dude, that I wasn't going to allow that damn shit to happen to me. I wasn't going to allow that to happen to me at all. A year later. His license is reevaluated. He gets his license reinstated. He's driving again. I'm not. The idea was, when I was going to be getting the license, and this was Ma's and Dave's plan all along, that what if David wasn't available and Ma needed help? I was called the emergency relief driver. I called myself that in front of him. In an emergency, I would drive. But not before. It would be a relief to you guys if I actually did drive. There was a time they actually came, Daryl. They came. We had a friend of ours, Judy Savage, got her sister's soul, and God bless her soul. Oh, she was a sweet lady. Intelligent, English teacher. I loved her. Oh, she was a wonderful woman, delight. She was like my big sister, about 10 or 20 years older, but, you know, biggest sister anyway. And she knew I had a passion for writing. There was a condition that took her ass out slowly but surely. I haven't heard from her in over a decade and a half. That still hurts like hell. Yeah. ADA daughter, chronic fatigue syndrome. It's real, it's legitimate, and it takes out people left and right. I don't know how it started, but it did, and it took her out slowly but surely. She was visiting from Canada, St. Uh, Catharines, right by New York. She 
She used to be a teacher at Brock University as a professor of English. She saw great potential. I miss the living crap out of my friend. Oh, stories to tell on that one. I know, I'm digressing. She was going to need to get her ride back to uh, wherever she was going to. But she needed to get a rental car. <clears throat> no, she was going to be returning a rental car somewhere. From one place to another place. The thing I noticed that I was going to be doing is driving. My brother was going to be driving her after we, she delivered the car because she couldn't get her ass home. But I was driving one particular uh, beast and Dave's driving the other beast for some reason. Ma had her car and Dave had a car from hell. A Datsun B210 green hatchback with Armstrong steering. This was a car my brother loved. This is a car that hates water. You know there's more stories on this one. Anyway, I get stuck with Armstrong. Dave drives Judy back because she can't drive. Um, actually, she gets the car taken out, but she's got to get back home somewhere. We went all the way over to LA Burb uh, Hollywood Burbank Airport, dropped it off at a place, and then we had to take the two cars home. No, hang on a second. Hang on a second. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. I had to get this memory straight into my head because it was a little bit fuzzy on that time. I remember driving alone at the damn Armstrong, but I think David was supposed to be driving the car that Judy just got for some reason or another. And I was driving the Armstrong steering alone. I had my license. I think this was the time when David was still waiting for his license to be re reinstated. He drove the Armstrong car. And then there was something happening in, in this time period. It was just cl it was just screwed up in my head. I still have to I still have to try to remember remember this damn thing. I get older, sometimes my memory gets a little fuzzy in certain situations over here, especially if, if it's emotionally intense. I couldn't remember the exact details on this one here, but I do remember driving the car alone, home, and following, and making it home alone. There have been a few times Dave had me drive in the car with him in it to different places. They get me used to it until we had that damn thing happening in, in Barham. And then out with that, I didn't, I didn't drive again into San Fernando Valley until we got into the Antelope Valley. Being in cramped, confined areas of the San Fernando Valley, you still have speed demons over there, really. Ready to kill you at a second's notice on those damn streets. And Love Valley was worse. It says 35 mile an hour streets. You got about 40, 45 mile an hour streets. Sometimes 50. Ballistics. Everyone gone ballistic. So I had to learn how to drive that damn thing. I started going, uh, taking buses to get through another pass. To get to the San Fernando Valley to get to work. In order for me to do that, I need to learn how to drive all over again. I got the license, I just need to get reacquainted. So Dave took me, before we started doing this commuting crap, all over the Antelope Valley just to drive. 
to get used to it. So early in the morning, I would drive from one point to another point, and then get to the bus station and wait for the bus to take me commuting for nearly a year. But before I did that, I'd learn how to drive. I'd drive, I'd drive, I'd drive. Was I successful? I'm still alive. Did I love it? No. I still hate driving with a passion. Uh, before we got to this particular place we're living in right now, or I'm currently residing in, we had a station wagon that we drove it to death, literally. We threw a rod. Didn't take care of the car properly. You kill it. My brother and I are car killers. We turned a station wagon that was usable into a damn paperweight. Sold it to somebody else for scrap money. Anyway, I had changed my license from driver to ID. What can I say? I don't drive anymore. I don't have access to car. I got access to public transportation and I walk. I walk when I can. I walk at the bus to, uh, spot we have over here about a mile and a half or almost two miles away. Just to get from Rosemont over, over here to Lancaster. I don't have this, the credit necessary or the financial, finances, you know, nothing to get me even a transportation for my own self. So, if I'm walking, that's my transportation right there. If I'm able to use the uh, bus extensions they have over here called dialer rides, I'll use those. But, I am not killing myself in a damn vehicle ever again. Especially with me behind a damn wheel. I had to talk about these things with a therapist, but I still got to reiterate it with her. I'm scared shitless. I've had PTSD ever since I've had that accident back in the 76. There's no way in hell I'm going to try to put myself back to that damn shit ever again. If I was a tough boy, if I was a tough man, if I was tough, I could probably would have that mentality and say, ah, I can, I can deal and beat everything. Yeah, well, I'm still alive, assholes. So I'll deal with that one. Ma, for years, wanted me to be independent. She wanted me to drive. She wanted me just like David, comfortable behind the wheel, and I never could have been. I mean, we rarely had to talk with each other on this one. I rarely spoke to Ma concerning about the situation, and I did talk to my brother a few times on this damn shit. He knew I was still scared shitless about the damn car, and every once in a while, he would get up up his ass and say, Okay, John, you're driving. Or... When the car was still, when we actually had that station wagon still running at the time, it was a Ford Taurus, uh, 2001 station wagon. It was nice. Well, it was still in one piece. And we didn't kill it and throw out the rod. I prefer a van myself. I could see what's going on in the van. It meant a couple of times my brother had uh, medical conditions. I had to drive the car. Drive him home or drive to the hospital alone. And that was very rough. Rag, uh, that was scary. That was scary. Yeah, you confront your fears like that. Yeah, but I'm, it's not confronting the fears I'm worried about. It's trying, to get, trying not to get killed at the same damn time. I know, probably a lot of PTSD to ruin my life at this point over here, or rule my life. And why it would have been necessary in, in being independent about everything, just getting behind the wheel. I'd be still subject to everything about a damn vehicle in the first place. Maintenance costs, insurance, liabilities, federal and state laws. Well, especially state laws out here anyway. And trying not to be a killer. Not to keep what the 
finances on the damn thing, and the insurance rates on that shit. Not to mention the maintenance involved. Oh, God. Oh, I'm not, not that. Mm -mm, no. No, 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 no. Not de de dealing with that shit. Am I happy perfectly being away from the damn thing? Yep. And I'm still miserable about it because I wish I had it. I hate being saddled down with this damn fear crap that's lost to the hell as long as it has. And they were my damn choices, Daryl. A lot of them I made. I'm not proud of any one of them either. If I had the courage back then, if I actually had the nerve just to stare it down and be grimace-faced all the damn time and say, you beware of me because I'm on the road. No, because what I kept thinking is the little boy that damn near got killed, and even though he wasn't the driver, he was still in a car. And I was facing it. That's the thing I'm stuck with. That's the thing I'm stuck with, Daryl. I'm scared shitless, dude. I'm scared shitless of it all. I'm a 57-year-old. I, you think I'd be tough and wizened about it. No, I'm still scared shitless of it. I can walk around and not feel that much level of terror. I keep telling myself that damn shit. How come I'm still here all the damn time getting DoorDash? I can tell myself all the damn bullshit going on in the head, but shit, I can't even face the damn realities. Oh, I'm doing real lovely, aren't I? Damn hypocrite. Oh, it's not you, it's me. Always has been. And they wanted me to be a brave boy. They wanted me to brave, be a brave boy. Well, shit, you go through the shit I went through. Where's the bravery in that? I'm laying in a hospital bed after getting through an accident, and how come I'm not screaming and yelling? My mother's wondering how come I'm so damn styling because Mary, Mrs. Shaw, or actually she called him Mrs. Weaver at the time, your son's in a lot of pain. Or he can't focus on anything else but the pain right now. I was so damn numb to everything else. I didn't know what the hell was going on. I damn right died in a car. It scared the hell out of me, Daryl. I talked about this in other videos about this one of my wind files. We were moving from North Hollywood to Arlita. Dave was doing the driving. We had to station a wagon Dodge Monaco. We had this damn thing for several years. It was our workhorse. <sighs> Loved that car. We all did. And this particular car drove model to work in different places. We cross country trip well, to Wyoming anyway and back. It was a good car too. And Dave gets his license. So we got a driver in the family. Young and experienced, didn't know his ass about hot rock. Next thing I know we're in the hospital. Speeding through streets like crazy, we're doing the last run. He told me before we left that I don't need to wear a seatbelt. I told him, yeah, wearing a seatbelt anyway. During those days, we had lap belts. We didn't have a shoulder. If we had a shoulder, I think it would have been better. Monaco had dual dashboard. Top, padded, cushiony. Bottom, metal for the tray. When you flip open the uh, compartment door there, there's your metal tray with a, two cup holders in there. But you have that metal lip. has a bloody dent. Racing through the streets trying to get to the old homestead to pick up some stuff. Drive by his junior high, speeding, hit oil and water. We both joked that we hit a cat, but we didn't see a cat. Fish tilled. 
I don't know if the damn thing spun around or not, but all I know is we hit something hard and round. And it concaved the engine, it concaved the front end, and pushed the engine mount almost into, past the dashboard. They fought like hell to get out of there and got me out of there too, cutting straps left and right with a pocket knife. We're sitting outside, bleeding. I'm more severe than he is, and we're wondering what we're going to tell Ma about this one. We're more worried about her wrath, about losing the damn car, than we worrying about our health. You talk about shock during that time. There's more to it on this one, but I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to leave it at that. Anyway. Yeah. <sighs> You talk about the shit we have to walk through, my friend? I'm a walking accident case when I was a young kid. I couldn't help it. Third video.